right. Well, uh, so this is our second half of talking about Black Mirror season four. And part two. Just like the first time, it's even more timely that it's been a few more days since the, it's just, uh, came out. Wanted to add a couple extra age days to the maturity <laughs> of the episodes. Um, but now the, they are optimum. They are optimum. The first, the number four episode was Hang the DJ. Yes. And I was expecting this to be more, much darker. I think that was kind of the point of naming it this. But, right. Um, it was, it's hard. I feel like we're going to go two different ways on this one. I, I enjoyed it. I, uh-huh. I liked it. I will never watch it again. No? No. It's, so, uh, yeah. Go ahead. The, the ending, the reveal, very much made the whole episode pointless. Uh, yes and no. Uh, for starters, I rank this episode number one. Really? That's yeah. shocking to me. I, I, I don't know why. I mm-hmm. just really enjoyed this episode. Uh, I, I felt like this one, even though obviously it's not real, it felt like the most realistic. Yeah. I don't know why. It felt like, like that could happen to me. Not that it would, not in this lifetime. But that if, you would find the perfect didn't... match? Yeah, that'll never happen. <laughs> That's why I love this episode so much. Uh, no, it, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I just enjoyed this episode. I would say it's my favorite. Yeah. So the idea behind this one is there are two people who show up on a blind date and while they're sitting there, they have like these Alexa Echo Home Pod things that they carry around yeah. with them. And they say, all right, let's check our expiration date. And it says, we have 12 hours. And so they're like, all right, well, that makes it easy. So they know yeah. that they'll have a relationship together for 12 hours. And they're like committed to only being together for 12 hours. And so they, yes. they go through and they spend time together and they're like enjoying each other and having a lot of fun. And the 12 hours is up and they go part their ways. And the guy was like, man, I feel like she was perfect for me. You know, he's talking to the Alexa thing and the Alexa thing is like responding is like, no, we have to go through many relationships to figure out how you respond to things and what your reactions are. And we will compile all the information together to help you find your perfect mate. And, uh, so basically to give, to give, I guess some background on the world, it's like a, it's like, uh, it's like if you were to live in Tinder, right? Yeah. If, if, if Tinder was like a real world and it set up all the dates for you, it was, everything was predetermined as far as where you were going, even what you're going to eat, you know, on your first date. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause that was, it, it's like very strict. They even have like guards watching. Um, you're going to be with this person for this set time in this place that they've provided for you. Uh, you follow their plan. And if you do everything according to their plan, eventually it will lead you to, your perfect mate. Yeah. Based on, you know, the analysis of you doing what it says. Yeah. And um, so they, the original couple break up after 12 hours. Then they both get into longer relationships. The girl's in a relationship for nine months. The guy's in a relationship for a year. And they're both kind of miserable. Like the girl ends up going to get, dating a bunch of guys and hating it. The guy is miserable because the girl he's with is just miserable. And so they both yeah. hate each other. And so everyone's happy to finally split up. And then they get put back together again. And well, so before, before you get too far, I'd like to, I think it's worth noting that the first relationship is, it was pr- essentially designed to be a one night stand, right? Yes. But they decide to not do anything sexual. Instead, they just lay in bed and hold hands, yeah. and that's how they spend their night. And so every time the girl, and I don't even remember her name, is with a new partner, she she tries to, like, recapture that, right? Yeah. She she reaches to grab the hand of whoever she's with, and it's never the same. You know, it, it's never the same as that first guy that she was with. Yeah. 
and the the other you know the, the main guy oh gosh as soon as it's as soon as i saw Amy, that Amy date, and frank yeah that's right as soon as it it, it showed his expiration date of a year it, it, that felt like a, a punch to the stomach i was yeah. like oh that's awful well they they it, both it started bad <laughs> she as he, soon as he <laughs> sat down she's like oh let's see how long we have Cause she's she was in, already complaining because he was late. She was she was just grumpy looking. She was not and, impressed with his looks. No. So you know it's going to be bad, yeah. and then now he's got a year. <sighs> that was awful. That was hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I, I it's an interesting, it. it's an interesting idea of them being stuck for an right. assi- there, there is no way out like yeah. you have to follow the plan no matter what it's just how it is and they're just miserable but they um, uh, there's one point where they they do meet up again at a wedding or yeah. I, I guess it's a wedding yeah it was a wedding or it's like an engagement party or something right pairing day i think is what they call yeah. it yeah so we get to see another couple who has finally been matched up in their Supposedly super happy, this and that, and it it, it, go, it just goes to show you that that's going to be the eventual end. Is you get paired up and then you get to be happy forever. Uh, but they see each other again, and at this point, I think it'd been six months uh, into like that, their new yeah. relationships. And um, you know, they 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 kind of hit it off again. You know, you could definitely tell there was a. A spark or whatever, but then they have to go back to their partners who these two relationships started out so differently. Like his started out bad yeah. and it just stayed, stayed bad. <laughs> yeah. Her started out really good. She was real happy, this and that. And then it even, I mean, nine months later, it's, she's over it. She's ready to move on. Yeah. The well, guy's it, ready to move on. It was very surface, that relationship. Right. Um, but so she, she gets out of her relationship at nine months. The other guy's still got a year and she goes through. Yeah. So yeah, he's got three months left and she goes through a bunch of 36 hour relationships. Yeah. A bunch of little one night stands and short flings. Yeah. And, uh, and each time it, she's, she's pretty much just going through the motions at this point. Uh, and she's just not finding. The same feeling that she had with the first guy. Yeah. But they end up back together. The, the program sets them back up and she's right. like, you know what? Let's not check how long we have. Maybe we can, yeah. maybe we can make it without it. Let's just, you know, let's just see. Let's see what happens. We're not so, going to look. We're just going to enjoy it while it's here and we're not going to worry about when it's going to end. And, um, it goes oh, well for that, so. <laughs> it goes well for I a wanted while. to know so bad. <laughs> and uh their relationship is going great. You know, they're falling in love, they you know, enjoying spending their time together. And he is so happy he's afraid that it's going to end. So he yeah. decides like, oh, I'll just check. And he opens it up and it says five years. And right. he he seems like happy but kinda sad, knowing that like, oh, this is going to end but at least we have five years together like it was this weird mix of emotions for him and then the machine started recalibrating and then uh, it, it dropped to three years three years and then a one and year. then i was like no no <laughs> that scene where it kept recalibrating was like so upsetting to me yeah like it was it was like killing me i was like oh my gosh this dude it was like i felt like it was ruining my life <laughs> i was and- like you are ruining everything <laughs> He, it drops down to like 12 hours and, uh, yeah. <sighs> the machine tells him like it, because you know, because you looked, because you guys didn't look together, you've, it essentially you've ruined the relationship. Your knowledge. Yeah. Of it just keeps saying some, what is it like? Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And so he's depressed. <laughs> he's super so depressed. Awful. And she's like confused and finally asking, like, what's going on? He's like, you know, I looked, we had five years, now we have 12 hours. Oh, she gosh. gets mad because they promised each other they wouldn't look and then they yeah. break up. And right. uh, it goes on for so, a little bit. 
So before we before we move on, the, it, it, like I said, him not looking it was driving me nuts because I I was the same as him. I was like, I need to know <laughs> how long because what if it's like ten seconds and I waste these ten seconds? Because okay, so think of it the same as this. Like, what if you had the ability in your hand to find out when you were going to die, mm-hmm. right? That would be such a struggle for me because it's like I don't want to know because I don't want that to just be constantly on my mind. Mm-hmm. But I don't. But I don't know how long I would be able to go until yeah. I looked. Well, my, it's, it's so tough. <laughs> my question was, what happens if they get past their expiration date and they've never looked? What would happen then? Would someone just show up and split them up? Like, because every other time it's been amicable. That they're like, right. they watch it count down, it hits zero, and they're like, all right, thanks, that was well, great. Perhaps or, perhaps it was set up that way to where by the time they get five years in, they would be ready to move on. They would just break up anyways, they would check or something like that, like it was... Well, I, <clears> I wonder <throat> if it would, t- if, if, yeah, they don't see the countdown, but at the end of the five years, the thing still alerts them that, hey, it's over now. Yeah. But... And, and maybe by then they were like, okay, well, we were done anyways. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, so they break up. Then the machine says, all right, well, we've compiled all the information. We know we're, we've set up your pairing day. It's tomorrow. You have yeah. <clears throat> one chance for like six hours with anyone you want. And they decide they want to be together. I thought it was like one hour, right? Maybe it was one hour. It wasn't very Maybe much one time. hour with anybody. And they, yeah, they both choose each other. And, uh, because at which, this point they, they know it's, well, I wondered it, it, if they, so, uh, they get together and they decide, let's run away. Let's escape. Let's go climb the wall and get out of here. I wonder if they hadn't done that, if the machine was going to put them together anyways, because they both had it, been chose, chosen to have a pairing the next day. Right. Like I, I they were the original, part, you know, if it was going to end end up like that anyways and they yeah. ruined it. Mm-hmm. But uh um yeah, but, that's tough. But anyway, so they escape, they run up the ladder and then the whole world digitizes and disappears. Then yeah. they're surrounded by another 999 copies of themselves mm-hmm. all around and it all compiles into one data dump that turns out to be an app like Tinder that has paired these two people in the real world. So everything we watched was a simulation. Uh-huh. The computer ran a simulation a thousand times with a different, you know, lengths of time that they could spend together and how things would work and if they would end up together in these simulations to help the people in the real world decide if they wanted to date. And so everything, my issue, the problem I didn't really like it was all your investment into their relationship and them getting to know each other was all for nothing. It was all a simulation. It didn't mean anything. It was all the beginning of their actual relationship potentially because they never actually talk in real life. And so while I enjoyed it and I thought the idea was cool and that the reveal was great, it kind of deflated all the emotion by doing that. Okay, see, I saw it differently, and I'm not saying that's how it is. Maybe I just misinterpreted. I thought that so they go through the simulation, yep, and then by the end, they you know they 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 try to escape together. Yes, and that was not supposed to happen. No one's supposed to go over the wall, so it like resets them. But every time it resets them. They always find their way back to each other, and it just keeps on resetting and resetting and resetting because that's not supposed to happen. No. the So it zooms out, right? So they right. <clears throat> everything digitizes. They're in the black room with all the other copies of themselves. Mm-hmm. And then all that compiles into that, that counter that says 99.8 or 98.8%. And then right. it zooms from that. That's the phone uh, he's holding. I got gotcha. you. With her picture, she has the phone that has the same percentage. So it's saying like, you guys are paired at 98.8% based on these simulations that the computer has run. 
that you guys okay, would work I, well together. That makes sense. I thought that was just the the next simulation starting. No, that that I'm pretty sure is real life. Everything else was a okay. simulation. That was them actually meeting in real life. Uh, okay. I don't well e- either way, I don't have a problem with with that being the end. Oh yeah, I don't I don't think it was bad. I just would never watch it again because like I think I definitely will now. <laughs> you should at least watch the last few minutes. Um right. it just is pointless. It's kind of the whole idea of oh everything was just a dream. Like there's no there's no stake in it. You know, there's no Well, yes. Yeah, okay, those those specific circumstances didn't happen, mm-hmm. but it's it's pretty much saying now they can happen just in real life. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Still my favorite. It's, <laughs> well, it's number one. I think this is probably on the lower end for me. Not the lowest, really? but the next one I think is actually the lowest for me. Okay, see, judging by the fact that this is my number six, I thought for sure it would be your number one. Uh, Metalhead? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Metalhead was the worst episode of this whole season. Yeah, it for sure was. Um, it... <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know what it was about it that I really did not like. I think the animation there was no real story to it. Yeah. Well, it, it was too empty, right? It was yeah, very empty. You. I wanted they, a lot more from it. They left it very open for you to kind of figure it out um, and guess what's happening. It's borderline a silent movie, or a, yeah. You know, there's not, there's hardly any dialogue because all the characters die within the first few minutes and there's only one woman left. Um, right. And, and it's black and white and I didn't, I don't understand. Yeah. I think, well, I think the black and white was to help hide the animation of the dog. Oh, you think so? I think, I, I think that was part of it because it just, something about it didn't look right. Um, and then I, I really didn't like the dog. The, so the dog was this robotic thing. I didn't have any problem with the dog. That was chasing everyone and killing everyone. And I think you're supposed to like take it off, take, take the idea of like, oh, technology has advanced so far that it's murdering people. Like it's, it's, it's not working for anyone anymore. It's AI is taking over the world and is killing all these people. And which you know why or no. anything like that? That's mm-hmm. the, that's the problem. It's like, well, is it killing criminals? Is it is it killing everybody? Are these like the last some of the last people on Earth? I, there's there's not enough for me there. Yeah, well, I think it was the last people on Earth. I don't think they're killing people for anyone. I think they're just AI that were killing people. But my issue with the dog was it was very. Uh, it was very convenient and constricted based on the plot. So when, like, the dog could drive a car and had a gun and had all this stuff, like, it could just do everything it needed to do to drive the story forward. And except then, climb a tree. except climb a tree or that the battery would drain, but then the battery would recharge. Like, it just had a lot of things that were unnecessary for it. Like, I don't know, it just felt very convenient for the for the plot to drive the story forward. And I, I just didn't... I, uh, yeah. I had a hard time connecting like with this I like the part ones. where she was able to outsmart it and drain the battery. Like, yeah, it's it's machine and maybe it's dominant, but there's still, like, ways to outsmart it. That I didn't I didn't have a problem with. But the fact that, okay, the one of the dudes who was driving the van, it straight shot that dude's head off. Yeah. Why couldn't it just shoot her up in the tree? Exactly. Uh, or, that was the one thing I was like, or just stick its claws into the tree, you know, yep. and climb up. Yeah. Or shoot a tracker at it because it clearly had more trackers. I assumed it didn't shoot because it was out of ammo. Um, but I don't know. Maybe. Like it was just, it was just very strange. The, cause like yeah. it murdered the two guys pretty easily mm-hmm. and then it struggled to kill the woman and it just seemed like, the woman didn't seem more capable than the guys. She was just supposed to survive. And that's the only reason why she survived. Like based on how 
how deadly it was before then. It's she sure was just in a better position to survive. She had weapons and different things, you know, in her surroundings that she was able to use to advantage. The other guys were just one guy was driving, and that was one thing that I liked was when that thing chased down the van, uh-huh. and it, you know, it, it it made its way to the back. The sheer terror that you could tell from the guy—he knew, he knew he was going to die. Like there was nothing he could do, yeah. and he's, you know, more than likely seen what these things can do to people. He like he legit. You could just see the 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 fear in his face. Uh, you know, seconds before it was gone. Yeah. Well, so Black Mirror every episode kind of sets forward a question or like plays with an idea. This one, I felt like they were doing it with a genre, where this was a slasher film, basically, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah. this, like you could have, you could have swapped out Jason or Freddy Krueger for the dog, and it been a right. very similar thing. And I think that is part of why this episode was so weak, was because there wasn't really any questions. I mean, kind of like so they end up sacrificing themselves trying to get a teddy bear. Um is what it ends up like either they were trying to get a teddy bear for a kid who was dying to make his life a little bit better towards the end, or the guy grabbed the wrong box and it it was, they were tricked into getting teddy bears. But I, I don't know. I I think the story was set up to make you for them to try to get teddy bears. Like, I think that was the whole point. Um, especially with the reveal. I think if they were tricked into getting teddy bears, they would have shown the teddy bears right away. Like, I don't think they would have held that for the final reveal. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I could have done with all that. I, I, I would, I think I would have liked it more if it had the, uh, what's that episode? White bear. If it was, you know what I'm talking about? Uh huh. If it was similar to that, right? Where we spend this whole episode. With these characters that are like fearing for their lives and they're on the run and they're trying to escape this evil thing only to find out that they're bad, right? And they're being chased by the police. Yeah. And like they deserve, you know, whatever happens, mm-hmm. but you don't feel that until the very end or something like that. Yeah. Even though it, that probably would have been too similar to White Bear. Yeah. I, 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 I think I would have liked that more. At least it would have had some reason behind it. Yeah. A good reason behind the, it. I don't know. This episode. This episode felt pretty flat. And at the end of it, she ends up getting a tracker in her face and in her neck. And I, I guess she is like, I can't cut it out of my neck because that'll kill me. It was, cause she was about to cut the one out of her face, but then she saw the one in her neck and gave up and ended up killing herself. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's (coughs) this episode. I feel like they had a cool idea, but the execution of it kind of just fell flat. Like it was just kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it. it I, I I don't know if it could have been like much better, but it definitely felt like there could have been something better. Yeah. Um. Not not that I think it's a bad episode. Like I still like. Uh, I probably won't watch it again, but I still. Would say I was like, oh, it, you know, I don't feel like I wasted my time. Yeah, it just it, it wasn't great. Yeah, well, that brings us to probably what's going to be the most divisive between the two of us. I would assume was Black Museum. Yes. Um, okay, so this one I, I I have ranked at number three for me. Okay, but it's. It's real close to being number two. It's almost like a tie for number two with the Callister. Uh huh. Um. So for me, before we get into the plot of it, but there because of all the callbacks, maybe. <laughs> maybe. So if let me try to explain this as clear as I can. Right. Uh, if this universe is the only universe that is connected to all the other universes, I liked it. If this universe is connecting all the universes into one, I really didn't like it. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, Kind of. Ex- ex- explain what you mean. So clearly this episode is connected to everything else, right? They had 
they had all they had a bunch of call or uh references to other episodes with you know the lollipop from USS Callister the the uh costume from uh White Bear um just different things here and there that were connecting all the other episodes yeah there was there was a few from this season which mm-hmm. the only one that i really had a problem with was the bathtub yeah well so that's like my point is if this episode is its own universe that is connected that in this specific universe everything else also happened but it's not making everything in one universe for the show do you know what i'm saying like right yes so, so if each if each episode is its own universe but in this one specific universe, everything else also happened in it. I like yes. it. But if, I see what you're saying. if this episode is saying all the episodes, that all episodes are in the same universe, then I really didn't like it. Which I don't know if they are. Uh, I don't know because, hmm. It, Cause it can go either way. Yeah, it can. And so it's like, because that's what makes the Black Mirror so interesting is it being a new world, a new universe. A standalone every, every time. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be connected in any way. And so if this episode was like, oh, no, everything is connected, uh, I really – I don't like it. Yeah, because it's it sets uh, what I would say, and maybe you would agree, is, is a bad precedent for future episodes. Yeah. Where they feel like they would have to tie it in to the – the overarching universe. Yeah. And they already kind but, of do callbacks in all the episodes to other things. And yeah, but they don't, they don't like slap you in the face with them sometimes, but I don't know. A lot of times it feels Besides that way. the song, like you mentioned. Well, I think like, okay, for example, the, the cookie thing, right? It's the exact mm-hmm. same thing from white Christmas, but it's not like they actually call back to white Christmas. It just also exists here. Yeah. Like, which that I like. Yeah, no, that's it's the same concept. Yeah, my issue comes in more where it, I feel like it kind of hinders the show's ability to come up with interesting ideas because now all the technology, because all the technology is so similar, you have to put it in line, like in a timeline, like, okay, well, uh, this happened here and this happened there. This was, and you know, like everything is working towards yeah, one thing uh, and it just really muddies up. All yeah, those okay. stories. So, for example, you have the the episode, uh, the entire history of you, yes. right, where you mm-hmm. can replay everything, and then you have the episode Crocodile, where you can like those those almost can't exist in the same universe because you wouldn't need to recall people's memories if you could just watch We're, their memories. Yeah, yeah, so, stuff like that being similar but different, it does have to exist separately or like you said in a timeline where maybe it started out with crocodile and then eventually turned into the entire history of you yeah but like then there's it evolved from that but there's other things where it's like it, it like detours you know what i mean like it's like well why would this happen um but not happen this way you know because like the uh archangel and the entire history of you and crocodile and the episode where he could see them all as uh, zombies and like <clears throat> all that stuff, like they don't really fit together very well if it's all the same universe right. because it's, it's more specific to the story, how each, each technology works. But if you force yeah, it, them together it works better, if, if in that episode, in that universe, the technology that they're focusing in on is the only big technology in the world yeah but uh so black museum is it it's really uh (laughs) it's well done (coughs) and the just did you like the episode or you're not sure i'm not sure like i said like if it was connecting the universes so i really like it if it's a standalone it's not connected right um, if it connects everything, I, I don't like it. But the ideas and everything I thought were cool. I felt like there was too much 
uh, stuff. Like, I think the, the having the museum of all this terrible stuff was interesting, but having, like you said, like the bathtub, having the, the iPad, the broken iPad, having the mask and the outfit from white bear. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's mainly the bathtub and the mask that make no sense because this is like, basically his museum is, is tech gone wrong. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm. It, the the bathtub has nothing to do with that. Yeah. It, it neither does the anything to do with white bear has nothing to do with it. Yeah. So those those didn't fit, and I question. I was that's why I wasn't even sure. I was like, was there a different episode with the bathtub? Like, because if it's just this one that we just saw, like that's kind of dumb. Yeah. Like, why would he have that? Like, it's it's not like he's a collector of like crime scene stuff, you know? Yeah. Or even uh, the lollipop. Why would he have the lollipop? Yeah, it, yeah, same with that. There's what's the story behind that? Does how would anyone even know what the story behind that lollipop is? Yeah. Anyone yeah, on the outside world. I think if they wouldn't have had all that callback stuff, it would have been a stronger episode. Because they would have been okay if he had like the box, the DNA machine. You know, maybe not necessarily Jesse Plemons, the one that he had, but Yeah. You know, showing that these are something that exists and more than likely, it's not just Jesse Plemons' character who is doing things like this. The or, problem, the problem is, you would have never known what that was if the lollipop wasn't in there, and it was just this little frame, metal frame with a scanner. I think, I think, I think observant people would know what it is. Uh, well, I think, like, I think some people would have figured it out, but, but not you don't just have by watching to because it. it doesn't, it doesn't fuel that episode. Yeah. No, I agree. Or, I or think. It, if I think he it would had be better. One of those tablets, not necessarily the one that she used, but just one in general. Like, yeah. oh, this was a time where we use these. We don't use them anymore, but I have one. When we spied on kids. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it, it didn't need to be that specific one. Yeah. Yeah. The Archangel one is the most forgivable because that is based on technology gone wrong. Okay. Yeah. But everything else didn't make any, hardly any sense at all. Um, but, so this episode is broken down into three parts. Well, it's, I guess it's kind of broken down into four parts, but it's really three different stories. Yes. Um, the first one was based on a doctor who realized, or they put a, an implant into his nervous system and they could connect the nervous system, or him, they could, he could essentially feel the pain of his patients. Yeah. To and, better uh, diagnose them. And so he, he goes through all this pain where he feels it exactly the way they're feeling it, but he doesn't have any damage done. And so someone, like a little kid, comes in with stomach pain, and he figures out, oh, this kid has cancer. And then someone or, else comes yeah. in, and all this different stuff. And so he's like becoming this great doctor because he can know exactly what's going on with his patients. But he one time accidentally has everything connected when a guy dies and all the endorphins that are released in death and everything, you know, he experiences death without dying and it completely changes his psyche. Yeah, and it, it really messes him up. He becomes addicted to pain. Like that's the only thing that, he enjoys anymore and right. uh, he starts uh, connecting the patients just to fill their pain, not to help them. So he ends up getting fired basically from his job as a doctor. Then he starts cutting himself, but he realizes well, he pretty much lets a patient die just to experience it again. Yeah. And so he, he starts cutting himself, but realizes uh. Not, that was upsetting. <laughs> yeah, that was gross. Not having, not being afraid made a big difference in his enjoyment the fear of it. fear is what really fueled the, the thrill. And not, not necessarily the pain. Yeah. So he finds this homeless guy, connects to him, and basically just murders him. Drill, takes a drill bit and drills the guy's eye out, I guess. I don't, but. That's like drilled into his head or something. Right? Yeah. And uh, the police stop him while he's murdering him 
and put them into a vegetative state. I assume they just beat them into it. Yeah. Um, but that was kind of, that was the first story. The first of three. The second story. So, oh, I wonder ahead. why after, after it was, it was showing to be effective, why didn't other doctors start doing the same thing? Uh, why is he the only one who ever did it? It wasn't like a secret, you know, mm-hmm. it was, he became what seemed like he became kind of well known for it and it was proven to be effective and it was, he was a good doctor. So why didn't it catch on? Well, I think because it's irreversible, they're waiting to see if any problems came up, which they did. Yeah, clearly. And so they, they kind of like the guy even said, he's like, you know, we're going to try to help you take care of this, but we have a ton of other stuff going on too. We can't just focus on your issues. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so then the second story, I didn't, the second story was kind of weird. The, the, yeah, it was, um, that one was frustrating. Yeah. The, so there's a, a guy and a girl, they get together, she gets pregnant, they have a kid, they're out hanging out, she gets hit by a car and is now in a vegetative state. Yes. And, the the guy, the museum guy who worked at the hospital at the time, comes and talks to her husband or boyfriend or whatever, and is like, this is what we can do. She's never going to come back. This is, you know, she's, all she can do is answer yes or no on this uh, machine. That's, yeah. the, that's the only option she has. Or we can take her consciousness and put it into your brain and you, you're not using it anyways. Yeah. You, cause he said that you only use 40% of your brain. So you guys can, you'll split. We can fit a yeah. second conscious consciousness in there, which is a, a dumb, dumb premise. Dumb. But anyways, yeah, but it, it was like, whatever they, uh, so they do that. He, she wants to do it. He decides to let her do it. And it's going well. She gets to hug her kid and kind of like... Everything that he sees, she can see. She's pretty much living in his eye. Yeah. And then everything he feels, she can feel and taste and smell and everything. Pretty yeah. Much. They share it together. But she's she, constantly in his head. She has no control over anything. Right. And so she is... She becomes more nitpicky about everything he's doing, about not washing his hands when he goes to the bathroom... Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, what's the, it's, it's wore off the, whatever I'm, the word I'm looking for. Like the honeymoon stage of it? Pretty much, yeah. And, uh, so they, they're fighting constantly. And I thought it was kind of funny when he was like going to get back at her. So he, he goes and eats anchovies because yeah. he doesn't <laughs> mind them, but she hates them. So he's like, and she can taste it. <laughs> yeah. So. He's like, are you going to be quiet? And she's nitpicking at him. So he eats one. He's like, how about now? And they're just yelling at each other. Um, but so they go and they talk to the doctor again. And the doctor's like, well, I can give you a pause button. And he's like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and so the next time they get in a fight, they, she, he pauses her for four months. And, but for her, it's instant. She doesn't realize how long yeah. has gone on, but he comes back and. He's like, it's been four months and he's like, you know, I just needed a break. You know, you're always, there's nothing, I couldn't do anything without you getting on my case about it. I just needed some space. And so they, they set up a deal where she would be paused for everything but the weekend so she yeah, could see her kid. Split custody essentially. Yeah. Um, but what happens is he starts making a relationship. Her building, he gets a new relationship with this woman, his next door neighbor. Right. And it's this big conflict between her and his head and the, his new girlfriend. And so without asking her permission, they remove her consciousness from his brain, put it into a teddy bear. And now all she can communicate is either, uh, I love you or monkey needs a hug because she's put inside of a monkey doll. Right. And, uh, oh, man. that's kind of it. That's the, the kid stops playing with the monkey after a while. Cause he doesn't know it's his mom. Be- right. So, so the guy had the option to just straight delete her. 
Yes. But he didn't want to do that because he, he still had guilt, even though he didn't want her there. It would essentially be killing her, like officially she'd be gone. Yeah. So yeah, they opt to put her in that monkey and it's, uh, it's so weird. Well, I was thinking about it and it seems like they could definitely give her like Wi-Fi connection so she could watch things like Netflix or browse the internet or at least just do something. Right. Like you have all this technology to store someone's consciousness in a doll and you can't, can't give them something to do. But it's, yeah, it, there should have been more. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that she is in the doll still in the museum, yeah, just sitting knows there. how long. Yeah. Um, and then the third and final story of this episode is a murderer who is on death row. This guy goes and talks to him and offers to take his consciousness and put it in the museum and we'll pay his family. So the murderer is like, yeah, let's do that. You know, if I either I'm going to get acquitted because I'm innocent or I'm going to get killed and at least this will help take care of my family. But he doesn't realize that his consciousness is going to suffer. And so, yeah, he thinks it's just going to be, I guess a free man. Well, he thinks it's going to be just digital. He doesn't realize that he is going to be aware be of it. Message. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man. so the, that was tough. yeah, the guy puts him in a prison cell in the museum where people can come and basically ex- execute him. Execute him. And so he has to relive his execution over and over and over and like many times a day. Yeah. And all just for people's enjoyment. Um, yeah. <laughs> but towards the end, someone comes. And so he can only do it for 10 seconds. If it goes 15 seconds, it will destroy him. If it goes longer it'll, than 10 it'll seconds. Wipe his, it'll wipe the whole system or whatever. Yeah. If it goes beyond 10 seconds, it's like going to do permanent damage. And some guy comes and pays a ton of money to do it for 14 seconds. Which... Yeah. Um, I didn't understand. You can tell me what you think, but like the guy pays like, I don't know, a couple grand, right? In that envelope. Yeah. Well, why not just pay the admission fee twice and do it two times? Do it for 10 seconds it, twice. What's the difference? Because it's, it's about pushing it further than what you're allowed to. Yeah, I guess. It, but, it, it wouldn't have mattered if it was one second extra, you know? If like the limit was twelve seconds, uh, but everyone was allowed ten seconds, they would pay extra just to have that one extra second, just because yeah. it's past the the threshold of what is allowed. Just extra power. Yeah, it, that's all it is is power. Yeah, and so this guy does it for fourteen seconds, and like basically puts the guy in a vegetative state, the consciousness. Yeah, it, it wipes him anyways. Well, not wipes him, but it. Yeah, well, like you said, he's a vegetable now. Yeah, which is kind of across the board, all three characters. Um, but uh, so yeah, it turns out that the girl that he is showing around the museum, because the museum's empty, no one's coming anymore. It's like kind of run down. No one cares about it. Um, he's giving a tour to just one person. She ends up being the guy's daughter, the the prisoner's daughter, the murderer's daughter, and they believe that he is innocent and being tortured. So she poisoned the museum tour guide, whatever, the the guy who owns the museum. And right. the the guy who has uh made all this other stuff happen, ruined so many other people's lives. She takes his consciousness, and this was, I thought, really dumb, but she takes his consciousness, puts it inside the consciousness of her dad. Oh, yeah, that's right. And it's like, it it's too many steps. You know, there's, like, its it was hard enough to believe that, one, you could take a consciousness and put it into a physical consciousness, but to take a conscious 
and put it into another con or like an a, existing consciousness. And it just it was too much. But anyway, so she she does that and then murders her dad's consciousness with the by doing it the electric chair for fifteen, for 15 se- seconds. Fifteen yeah. seconds. So the I guess the the part that I had a hard time understanding completely was the keychain, right? She she ends up getting that guy into the keychain. Mm-hmm. But all the other people who had that keychain, was were those all individual consciousnesses of that guy being tortured forever? Yep. That's pretty awful. <laughs> yeah. It's just a never. I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. So there's like hundreds or maybe thousands of this guy out there being tortured. Nonstop. By, yeah, yeah, forever. Just yeah. on a keychain. And it was, I didn't really like that part either. Because that didn't really make a lot of sense. Like, It was weird. If shocking him, so you're not actually shocking him, right? Like it's a, it's all digital. Right. But if you do it for 10, 15 seconds, it gets erased. But you could capture that, which would essentially be the same thing, but yet you but could have that forever. Letter? Yeah, it was confusing. Um... um but it, it, I don't know. It was, it was interesting of, of an episode. Again, I think if it's it, its own, it could have been, yeah. If it's its own contained story, it's better. But if it's connecting everything, it's worse. I don't know. I, I go back and forth on this one. This could have served as like a series finale to Black Mirror. I think it might be. Oh, was really. I yeah I don't know we'll see what happens but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there's no more Black Mirror. Oh, uh, that sucks. Well, it does and it doesn't. This 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 yeah. season was definitely I think the worst of the four. Um. Yeah, I I would agree. Even the, though I liked it. Yeah, it was good. The concepts it wasn't as compelling. Yeah, the concepts weren't as original. And again, it, I said it when I talked to uh, Sam with nitpicks about it. Like you can't the the thing about Charlie Brooker is his ideas are so creative and so original. You only have a finite amount of those. You you yeah. can't be this amazing genius and constantly reinvent and you know create something that's so amazing all the time. That it's just gonna you're gonna run out. You're gonna get to the point where it's just not as good, and we're for, probably right there at that line. Yeah, I think if you they continue, it's just gonna continually get worse in quality. And uh, I don't know. I, I think if there's a season five, it's gonna be worse than season four, which was worse than season three. Which I think season three might be the peak. <laughs> um, yeah. But season three, he's got bad episodes too, you know? Like, it's just hard. Because all the, all the concepts in season four feel like they've been touched on in the other seasons. Right. You know? Yeah, they're just kind of expanded on a little bit. Yeah. Or they go a slightly different direction. Yeah, more, more specific, I think. Like, what Um, would this one thing, if this happened? But, cause it was very, it very felt the, uh, the entire history of you and White Christmas, uh, it felt like it hit on those ideas a lot of those two episodes. Yeah. The whole season four. Well, I mean, I don't blame them. Those are some of the best episodes. No, I agree. But my point is for season five, I don't know if there's anywhere I, else. I need them to do a whole season that kind of expands upon the the pig episode. The first episode, uh, with, yeah, with the prime minister, <laughs> like just how it the, works. The national anthem. You want like a? I, I want six similar stories. <laughs> I, Each one getting progressively <laughs> darker and worse. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. But uh, yeah, the season was good. If you haven't watched Black Mirror, it's definitely worth checking out. It is yeah. very dark. It uh it is upsetting and there's things that happen in all almost all the episodes that leave you kinda like, ugh. 
But um, well, and I think that was another tell for me on this season that it wasn't quite as unsettling, dark and compelling as because when you know when you watch the first couple seasons, it's like you really can only watch one or two, mm. and you really are like, oh, I gotta take a break from this. Yeah. But season four, we watched all at once. I watched them in two days. Yeah. So it it, it wasn't. It didn't have that. Like each episode felt resolved enough, you know, and not dark, so dark that you couldn't keep watching. Yeah. I think Crocodile had potential, but like I said, I think they, like, yeah, they kind of ruined it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. Overall, I did like it. Uh, like I said, I think Hang the DJ was my favorite, followed by the USS Callister. Yeah, Callister was probably my favorite. That one was just so. The story was good. The acting was good. Everything all around was good. And unlike a lot of episodes, it had yeah, a somewhat good happy ending. Uh, court sort of. It had a compelling well, like ending. I said, yes. The heroes of the story definitely win, which doesn't happen a lot in Black Mirror. But well, and that's what I'm getting at. In the reality, the questions it brings up is like, well, is that really a win or is it just a tragedy? For, like, if you don't know anything that happened, like if it was only his story, you never mm-hmm. see inside the world. Like you have just this guy who's beat down and no one likes him and everyone's making fun of him and the only thing he has is playing his video game where he's the hero for a little bit. You know, like if you cut out all the, all the extra stuff of them in the world without him. Right. It just becomes this tragic story. It, it becomes very much like, um, play test where the guy just dies. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think it's such a good episode because they make you feel that way towards him and then like almost, almost instantly. You flip on him. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, but then it still ends with him, you know, dying. And then you, you're faced with the question, like, should he have died? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he was a jerk, but was he really a jerk? It, it's, it's hard. And I'll compare it to a, a, a scene in Game of Thrones, right? In the books. Um, did you, I don't know how far you got in the books. Uh, How far did you get in the books? I don't remember the second or third book. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and say, yeah, spoiler I don't alert <laughs> for Game of Thrones, if you haven't watched or read. So there's the character Joffrey, right? Uh-huh. He's just this awful character. He's this 14-year-old kid who becomes king, and he's entitled, and he's just terrible. Yeah. So in the book, he is murdered on his wedding day. And the way that this scene is written, it, it's very similar feeling to it where initially you're happy, right? You're like, oh, finally, this villain is, is, is gone. Yeah. But the way that he dies, the way how brutal, cause it's more than just like him being poisoned. He's like clawing at his neck and he's choking and he's like turning purple. It, it, it almost makes you. Not necessarily feel bad, uh-huh. but it makes you like question yourself almost like I was just actively rooting for this 14 year old kid <laughs> to have like a very awful death. Yeah. And I definitely don't feel like they portrayed that in the show. It was more of a victory moment. It's like, mm-hmm. yes, he's finally dead and let's move on. Yeah. It, it didn't have that same feel. So I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't grasp, but like reading, reading that part in the book, it, you really feel like the magnitude of like you were just cheering for this kid to die. Yeah, he was a, a terrible person, but ah, it's still he's still a kid. Yeah, I don't uh, know. It's did you ever watch? I, I got that same feeling from it. Generation Kill. No, it's a a war movie Spoiler or alert. a war. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with it. It's um, where are they at? Afghanistan, maybe. It's more. Yeah. It's more current. Um. But it's about this journalist who was embedded with uh, this squad, and they're going around. And there's one leader who is just 
dangerous, right? Like makes bad decisions and does things that are, uh, risk his soldiers' lives and makes, you know, just, just not fit to be a leader. And, uh, at the end of the series, the journalist goes to the commander and is like, you need to really do something about that other leader. And the commander's like, it starts naming off all the good things that that guy has done and starts naming off all these bad things that the guy, the leader that he liked, that the journalist liked had done. Right. And it's like, you know, on paper, you know, what's the difference here? You know, like basically like you're, it's all about point of view. Yeah. Your point of view is this is your hero and this is your enemy, but you know, there's good and bad things with everyone. Like it was just the idea of like, you, the, the point of view or your, your perception of this one guy is that he's bad initially because you have a tainted opinion doesn't mean that's true type of thing. Yeah. And it was just an, just an interesting idea of like, oh yeah, well that's, that's a good point. Like just because these few instances are bad doesn't necessarily mean that it's all bad. I mean, yeah. I mean, you watch the show and you definitely feel like he's the bad, <laughs> he's not a good guy, but right, it's definitely interesting. But he's no different than the people that you like. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so that was Black Mirror season four. Yeah. Uh, um, if you enjoy our podcast, you can go over to I seen that or <laughs> Patreon slash I seen that. And you can vote for Taylor or I, whoever has the least amount of votes at the end of the month will have to pay a punishment. But also with that same dollar, you'll get access to all our episodes two weeks early. Um, yes. And you get to be in the cool boys club. If you're a cool girl, boys. if you're a girl, you also are in the cool boys club. It's not really cool gender, boys. gender specific. It's just the name. Um, yes. But you can follow us on Twitter at Icing That Pod and like us on Facebook.